Hey everyone, great to be back with you, Belgrano. In the away match against Baracus Central, the team took the lead early on, only to concede an equaliser in the 40th minute. The second half offered little in terms of excitement, and the score remained one. One until the final whistle. Consequently, they find themselves distanced from a coveted ticket to the next Copa Sudamericana, and it is evident that a miracle is needed to turn their fortunes around. The situation appears increasingly dire, prompting a shift in focus towards preparations for the upcoming season. As for the commencement of this new chapter, it remains highly uncertain whether coach Juan Cruz Real will retain his position. The recent victory of three, won in the derby against Instituto, achieved just two matches ago, seemed more like a temporary reprieve than a genuine turnaround in sentiment towards him. With only one win in their last seven league matches, it is only natural that the search for a new candidate is underway as they look ahead to 2025. Regarding the encounter with Rivandavia, we do not anticipate witnessing anything out of the ordinary. Offensively, the home team possesses the capability to find the back of the net. However, securing a clean sheet seems a formidable challenge given their defensive vulnerabilities. Team news. Kinyan, the midfielder with 25 appearances and one goal, will be absent due to accumulated cards and he will be replaced by Manossi, who has made 10 appearances. Injury concerns persist with Fernandez, forward 15 appearances, 5 goals. O. Sanchez, winger, no appearances. Baldi. Defensive midfielder, nine appearances. Passerini, forward, no appearances. And Marin, midfielder, four appearances, remaining sidelined. Crucially, Rayner, winger, 34 appearances, slash six goals, is also out of the squad due to disciplinary issues. The independent Rivadavia. Undoubtedly, the team has achieved its most significant victory, surpassing even the one that secured its promotion to the top tier last year. The two one triumph at home against River Plate, will be etched in the annals of the club's history, bringing smiles and pride to all associated with it. The team is rediscovering its true form game by game, and we are witnessing the emergence of what we all desire as we accumulate points. Our performances are commendable, and we are steadily rising from the depths to the heights. It's the simple things. The team has evolved since the match against San Lorenzo, both individually and collectively. We are ambitious to continue on this path, expressed a jubilant coach, Alfredo Berti, after the match concluded. However, the visiting team finds itself without any stakes in the final stretch of the season, as relegation is not a concern this year. Their sole motivation lies in improving their three-year coefficient to escape the bottom position, as the last-place team faces relegation. They remain hopeful for their continued presence in the top division through 2026. They will need to present themselves in a manner far superior to their usual away performances to secure a favourable outcome against Belgrano. Their record of two victories, three draws and seven defeats on the road does not inspire much optimism. Team News now. Nah. Castro remains the sole injury concern with no other absences reported in the latest updates. Our thinking is Belgrano is favoured, yet the match poses a significant risk for securing points. The hosts remain unbeaten in their last three encounters, but their coach is teetering on the brink of dismissal. Conversely, Rivandavia arrives with buoyant spirits following their two. One victory over River, although their away performance has been less than stellar. Goal, 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 goal. Argentinos Juniors. It has become rather tiresome to mention in every betting analysis the team's dismal away performance. Another defeat, this time a narrow one. Zero loss to Instituto leaves them with a disheartening record of zero away victories in 11 league matches, managing only two goals on the road. However, their home matches tell a completely different story. It's as if they undergo a transformation, becoming an almost invincible force. With just one loss in 12 encounters at the Diego Armando Maradona Stadium, they remain firmly in contention for a spot in the upcoming Copa Sudamericana. Following Racing Club's triumph in the Sudamericana, an additional ticket has now become available, one that they currently hold in their grasp. The margin for error in the next four matches is exceedingly slim, as any slip could jeopardise their coveted goal. Securing an away victory, whether against Independiente Rivadavia in the 25th round or at Estudiantes in the final match, would certainly be beneficial. Yet, as we noted, we may be asking for too much. 
Amidst ongoing developments, the Argentine club is experiencing changes at the helm. Interim coach Christian Zamatin has once again taken charge of the second team, creating an opportunity for fellow interim Norberto Batista to step in. Reports suggest that in the coming days, the matter of appointing a new head coach will be finalised. Team news. The right-back Coronel remains sidelined due to suspension for two more matches, having made nine appearances this season. Meanwhile, the central defender Galvin has accumulated enough yellow cards to warrant a suspension, with 32 appearances and one goal to his name. There are no new updates regarding injury concerns. The medical report lists Godoy, defender, four appearances, Cardoso, central midfielder, five appearances, Ramirez, defender, 13 appearances, A. Rodriguez, midfielder, 12 appearances, one goal, and Molina, forward, 29 appearances, five goals. Notably, the latter three may still have the opportunity to participate in upcoming matches. Additionally, a last-minute inclusion to this list is Oros, attacking midfielder, 41 appearances, two goals. Baracas Central In a match that unfolded like a half-hearted affair, the encounter with Belgrano concluded at one, won by the 40th minute, with neither team exhibiting the urgency to alter the scoreline in the second half. This result leaves Baracas with a mere single victory in their last eight league matches, firmly anchoring them at the bottom of the Argentine standings. Does it trouble them? Indeed. Do they feel the pressure? Not at all. With relegation not a concern this season, they can rest easy. Nevertheless, their performance has been lacklustre, particularly in the attacking department. Scoring just 11 goals in 23 league matches is hardly a statistic that would inspire pride among the players. On the road, they have shown some resilience, achieving three victories, three draws and six defeats. As the season approaches its climax, discussions surrounding Baracus's games are limited. Their sole objective is to accumulate as many points as possible to enhance their standing in the three-year table with an eye towards 2025. Team News The return of Herrera, defensive midfielder, 38 appearances, and Dermantini, central defender, 19 appearances, 2 goals, is upon us, as they have now completed their suspensions. The medical report for Baracas remains unscathed, with the absence of Mojano, starting goalkeeper, 9 appearances, Irizokva, central defender, one appearance, Goni, centre-back, 18 appearances, and Kruger, substitute forward, one appearance, continuing. Our thinking is, it would be a significant misstep for Argentinas to drop points in this match. They stand alone in their motivation, facing the weakest team in the league. Considering the offensive struggles of the visitors, we anticipate a scoreline of under 3.5, as it seems unlikely that Argentinas will find the net four times, especially if their opponent remains scoreless. Argentinos juniors wins plus under three, five goals. 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 Central Cordoba. In a match characterized by open play and relaxed defenses, Central has triumphantly returned to winning ways after a streak of four unsuccessful outings. They secured a three. Two away victory against Newell's Old Boys as both teams vied for the honour of scoring the most spectacular goal of the encounter. I believe that was the worst 25 minutes we have played since I arrived. Our start was very poor. We fell behind and in the locker room we tried to adapt and change our performance. We succeeded, remarked coach Omar de Felipe. This indicates a resurgence as the team begins to rediscover its former brilliance. For those familiar with previous match analyses, it is evident that there is no immediate incentive as the season draws to a close in the Liga Profesional. Since no team faces relegation and the tickets for the upcoming Sudamericana are already out of reach, the focus has long since shifted to the grand finale of the Cup. This is where a coveted spot in the 2025 Copa Libertadores, the first continental tournament in the club's illustrious history, will be fiercely contested. The remaining matches in the league schedule present an excellent opportunity for preparation ahead of this monumental encounter in mid-December. It is noteworthy that the matches have averaged exactly two goals, with the team netting 26 times while conceding 30, all within the framework of the Liga Professional. Team News The central team faces notable absences, with Casemiro defender two appearances and Montoya left-back no appearances unavailable. Rosary Central A fair one. 
One draw unfolded at the Estudiantes' home ground in the previous matchday. Neither team felt disheartened by the outcome as both lacked any significant motivation for points. Moving forward, Rosario's matches will carry a similar tone. They are neither facing relegation nor vying for a Copa Sudamericana spot. The focus has already shifted towards planning for the upcoming season, rendering the remaining fixtures somewhat of a chore. While points are valuable for all teams in enhancing their three-year coefficient, the urgency seems diminished. The upcoming match against Central Cordoba will mark the second game for coach Ariel Holan at the helm of the team. The Argentine has taken over from Matias Latora, and his primary objective is to halt a disheartening streak of seven winless matches. Whether he will succeed remains uncertain. However, examining the statistics from Argentina, Rosario has managed only two away victories in 12 outings. Their last triumph on the road was on August 5th with a narrow one. Zero win against Gymnasia. Team News The status of the central defensive duo, Quintana, 10 appearances, 1 goal, and Mayo, 14 appearances, 2 goals, remains uncertain as they were excluded from the squad against Estudiantes due to discomfort. Given the tight schedule between matches, their participation will be determined at the last moment. Additionally, the defensive midfielder Ibarra has accumulated cards, 35 appearances. Furthermore, the other central defender, Barbieri, 9 appearances, also did not play and is considered doubtful. The absences of Bravo, defender, 0 appearances, O'Connor, midfielder, 7 appearances, 1 goal, and Modica, forward, 10 appearances, 3 goals, are already well known. Our thinking is both teams possess the capability to score. After all, they are playing without pressure as neither has anything to lose in the upcoming matches. Under these circumstances, it is reasonable to expect at least one goal from each side. Goal, 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 goal. Port Vale. Confirmed their status as favourites in the away match against the bottom place Morecambe last Saturday, securing a narrow one. Zero victory. The decisive moment came from midfielder Ethan Chrysler, who netted his fourth goal of the season, showcasing Port Vale's consistent attacking prowess once again. Chrysler is among the 12 players who have found the back of the net in the league thus far. This victory marked a swift return to winning ways in the league, allowing them to maintain their position at the top of the standings. Should they triumph over Crewe, they will extend their lead to eight points above the fourth place and barring any unforeseen circumstances, they are poised to secure a direct promotion spot within the top three. It will serve as a significant test for us. We believe this match will be a splendid showcase for the League Two Championship, remarked the coach in anticipation of the encounter with Crew. Team News, Ben Garrity, the midfielder with 14 appearances and two goals, is unlikely to be available due to injury. Meanwhile, George Byers, a midfielder with seven appearances and one goal, along with Mitch Clark, a defender yet to make an appearance, have returned to training but remain highly doubtful for the upcoming match. Crew, The team is in exceptional form, as evidenced by their recent home victory against Notts County 2-0 last Saturday. Their leading scorer, Shiloh Tracy, forward 15 appearances, five goals, opened the scoring in the 40th minute, followed by Ryan Cooney, defender, who sealed the match with a precise penalty in the 62nd minute. Prior to this, they secured an away draw against Walsall, extending their unbeaten streak in League 2 to seven matches, four wins, three draws, zero losses during this period. We understand the significance of this match for our supporters, but for us, it's just another game that we believe we can win. We are experienced enough to recognise that it is simply another football match, stated Jack Lancaster, midfielder, in anticipation of the upcoming clash with Port Vale. Team News Chris Long, the forward with four appearances and one goal, has been excluded from participation in the latest match. Additionally, the injured players Kate Hemmings, a forward with eight appearances and three goals, Connor Thomas, a midfielder with ten appearances, and Nathan Robinson, a defender yet to make an appearance, remain sidelined. Our thinking is... Port Vale is a team that thrives on an attacking style, and it is unlikely that this will change any time soon. Meanwhile, Crew, as the visiting side, approaches matches with a counter-attacking strategy, having found the back of the net in their last eight away games, and they are poised to score once again.
goal, 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 Newcastle. The team has experienced fluctuations since the onset of the season, yet prior to the break, it celebrated a remarkable trio of consecutive victories. Following a narrow defeat to Chelsea in London for the league, 2-1, they rebounded with a commanding 2-0 win against the same opponent in the League Cup, followed by a hard-fought 1-0 triumph over Arsenal. These two results significantly shifted the atmosphere, leading them to Nottingham for their latest match. Historically, Forrest has been a favourable opponent and they have never lost at the city ground in Premier League encounters. They extended their unbeaten streak to seven matches, but most importantly, they departed with all three points. In theory, the team possesses the capability to contend fiercely for a European qualification spot. The key was to establish defensive solidity, which they have successfully achieved. It is no coincidence that they boast the third best defence in the league, having conceded just 11 goals. One more than second place Nottingham, whom they had previously bested with three goals. In this match, the team found itself trailing after a set piece. Pope showcased his skills by denying the sole significant opportunity for the home side in the second half, and shortly thereafter, Isak levelled the score. He missed a chance but played a crucial role in Joe Linton's second goal. It was pivotal that the Swedish forward returned to his optimal form, proving to be a formidable attacking asset. During a counter-attack, he also contributed to a third goal with Barnes. Team News Lascelles and Botman remain steadfastly sidelined, while Kraft has now joined the injury list as a defender. Additionally, Byrne will miss the upcoming match due to accumulated yellow cards. On a brighter note, Wilson and Trippier are poised for a return, although it seems unlikely they will be fit in time for the clash against West Ham. West Ham the fortune that favoured their two, one victory against Manchester United, was conspicuously absent in their recent encounter with Everton. Desperate for a win, they found themselves stymied in a goalless draw. Consequently, their position in the standings remains precariously low, though the performance in the second half offered a glimmer of hope. The first half resembled a lacklustre affair reminiscent of a Super League 2 match marred by a dearth of chances and rhythm, compounded by an alarming number of errors. Most of these missteps originated from their own players, a reflection of the mounting pressure they now face. With aspirations that began the season soaring high, they now find themselves grappling with a disheartening reality. Nevertheless, the Londoners gradually shifted into a higher gear, creating several significant opportunities. The most notable was a shot from Somerville that struck the woodwork, while in the closing moments Pickford executed a remarkable save against Ings's attempt. Thus, the Hammers remain goalless for the second consecutive match, a rarity for their standards even in a season where their form has been less than stellar. The sole silver lining was that after enduring 14 consecutive home matches in the Premier League where they conceded goals, they finally managed to keep a clean sheet. This marked only the second occasion this season that they, they achieved such a feat. The defensive performance has been, and continues to be, a significant concern. However, it is now evident that they are also failing to score the goals one would anticipate given the quality of their attacking lineup. Team news. Kundu remains under suspension while Alvarez has completed his ban and is set to return. Fulkrug is a permanent absentee, Due to injury, and Julian Lopetegui hinted that there are one or two additional players who are not at full fitness, though he refrained from naming them. Our thinking is, at some point West Ham will undoubtedly find their path, yet until that moment arrives they remain a team unworthy of trust. Newcastle, playing on their home turf, consistently demonstrates formidable prowess and holds a distinct advantage in this encounter. Newcastle wins under 4.5 goal 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 Vinicio The outcome of the latest match has cast a shadow over the five game stretch from the previous restart to the most recent break resulting in a decidedly negative impression The prior return to action was marred by a home defeat to Atalanta 0-2 Subsequently, the team managed to hold Monza to a draw, 2-2, at Brianteo, followed by a remarkable comeback victory against Udinese in Venice, where they overturned a 0-2 deficit to win 3-2.
They came tantalizingly close to securing a point at the iconic San Siro against Inter, narrowly losing 0-1. This set the stage for their encounter with Palmer at the Penzo Stadium. Despite taking an early lead just five minutes in and creating numerous clear chances while dominating possession, they succumbed to a disappointing one. Two defeat, showcasing a regrettable mismanagement of the match's flow. A bitter result in the live score from a team with shared ambitions now languishing at the bottom of the table, yet only two points adrift of safety. The upcoming match against Lecce is of critical importance. Their home record stands at two wins, zero draws and three losses, alternating between defeat and victory. Team news. The esteemed coach Di Francesco faces no issues with player absences. He is, however, presented with two intriguing dilemmas. One concerns the defensive line, where he must choose between Sverko and Altare, while the other revolves around the midfield flanks, pitting Candela against Ellertsen. The formation is set to be a sophisticated 3-4-2-1, with Oristano and Buzio elegantly manoeuvring behind the Finnish striker Poyan Palo, who will take his place at the pinnacle of the attack. The Lecce. Despite securing four points in their last three matches, the recent home draw against Empoli, 1-1, was perceived by the management as a defeat. Consequently, the decision was made to part ways with coach Gotti, with Giampaolo stepping in to take the helm, marking his return to Serie A after a two-year hiatus. The team has amassed a total of nine points, placing them below the relegation line, yet they are a mere point away from safety. A response is imperative as they now face a crucial relegation battle, with the objective for the season against Venezia being a shared one in the predictions. The seasoned Italian coach must primarily address the pressing issue of their attacking performance. The team has recorded the poorest performance in its category, managing a mere five goals. Their away record stands at a dismal 0-1-5 with not a single goal to their name and four consecutive defeats. In their last five matches, they suffered a humiliating 0-6 loss to Fiorentina at home. They then faced Napoli at the iconic Maradona Stadium, where they fell narrowly zero, one holding their heads high despite the defeat. A brief respite came with a one-zero victory against Verona at Via del Mare. However, they subsequently lost zero-one to Bologna at Dallara and settled for a one-one draw in Apulia against Empoli. Team News the squad continues to grapple with injuries as Berisha, Bonifazi, centre-back, Bernete, forward, Lansour, and Pierre, key defensive midfielder, remain sidelined. The latest setback is the loss of Banda, starting winger. In his debut, coach Giampaolo has opted for a 4-3-3 formation, featuring Pierotti, Kostovic and Dorg as the attacking trio. Our thinking is, Dean, the goal remains a taboo for Lecce. Considering the home advantage, the scales tip decidedly to the left. The recent change in the coaching staff of the Giallorossi adds a layer of complexity to the situation. Tradition dictates a GG outcome, but will the visiting team rise to the occasion? Venezia wins or draw over 1.5 goal. 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 Dunkirk. In the cup, the team triumphed over Batoon in a tense penalty shootout after a goalless draw in regular time, showcasing their resilience on the road. In the league, they displayed a commendable performance with a 1-0 away victory against Grenoble. Dominating the first half, they maintained impressive ball possession while expertly closing down spaces defensively. As the second half unfolded, the match balanced out, but they took the lead in the 67th minute with a goal from Bardelli, skillfully managing their advantage until the final whistle. Next, they will embark on a journey to face Mets. We are in excellent form at the moment and are eager to continue our positive trajectory, stated coach Luis Castro at the press conference. N Team News, the valuable striker in Singhi will undergo a readiness test. We do not anticipate significant changes to the starting lineup from coach Luis Castro, who is expected to rely heavily on the players from previous matches, having been pleased with the performance of his team, Ajaccio. In the cup, the team faced an unexpected exit, succumbing to a two. One defeat against Le Herbiers, a club from the fourth division, in an away match. However, in the league, they showcased their prowess with a decisive two. 
zero victory over Clermont in Corsica. Their offensive play was commendable for significant stretches of the game, creating numerous clear-cut chances in front of NDIA's goal, although they did encounter some defensive challenges. They made a strong start upon resuming play, taking the lead in the 48th minute with a goal from Anziani, followed by a second strike from Strata in the 64th minute, and they faced little threat as the match drew to a close. We must intensify our efforts in the coming period, as there are several areas where we need to improve, remarked the French coach, Mathieu Saber, during the press conference. Team News the seasoned centre-forward Sandeli has completed his suspension. The invaluable defender Quasi is also serving a ban. Fresh absences include the crucial defender Baba, the pivotal midfielder Barreto, and the esteemed forward Sumano. The significant full-back Kemba will miss the fourth match, while the experienced striker Tuzkar will be sidelined for the sixth. The quality attacking midfielder Jacob is out for the seventh, and the swift forward Hassan Toure will miss the tenth. The backup fullback Campanini remains perpetually unavailable. However, the young winger Chegra and the reserve striker Hamat Tura have successfully returned from their injuries. Our thinking is Dunkirke is enjoying a remarkable season, boasting an impressive streak of six consecutive home victories. In stark contrast, Ajaccio is struggling, having suffered four defeats in their last five official matches. With Dunkirke displaying a superior form, they are well positioned to triumph over the troubled Ajaccio. Dunkirk wins, Dunkirk wins, Dunkirk wins, Dunkirk wins, Dunkirk wins. Jong Eindhoven, the, th the third consecutive defeat, marking the seventh loss in the last eight matches, came in a disheartening one. Four result against Volendam. The performance was subpar, characterised by a lack of control in midfield and juvenile errors in defence. The final score, in fact, flatters the team, as the visitors netted all four goals in the first half. Muran at 4, 20, 27, and Jacobs at 42, while missing numerous opportunities thereafter. The home side managed only two long-range attempts from Abden, with the first striking the crossbar, 53, and the second finding the back of the net, 58. PSV Eindhoven the second has been struggling to regain its footing lately, a situation that is quite understandable given their defensive frailties. The evident lack of experience and quality has left many players grappling with the fundamentals of the game. Consequently, the attacking talent at their disposal is going to waste. However, the atmosphere will be different in the youth derby against AZ second, where they will seek to secure their first home victory of the season. The Belgian midfielder Babua faces disciplinary action while the defender Nagalo is currently sidelined due to injury. Additionally, the forward Fofana has yet to make an appearance this season due to ongoing discomfort. Jong Alkmaar In a thrilling encounter, the team surrendered a draw to Den Haag 3-3, marking their sixth consecutive home match without a victory, 0-2-4, with the last five concluding in both teams to score plus over 3.5 goals. They committed numerous errors in the first half, finding themselves down 3-0, Schalk 28-41, Bonnie 34. However, they quickly reduced the deficit after the break, Smits 47, Robemont 59, and after gaining a numerical advantage, Nikima 75, equalised in stoppage time, Andai 95. This match highlighted both the strengths and weaknesses of Alkmaar's second team this season. The ease with which they concede goals, particularly at home, holds them back, yet they possess talented individuals and excel in transition play. This makes them a formidable opponent on the road where they have triumphed in three of their last five matches, 3-0-2. Team News The status of the backup forward Van Daan remains highly uncertain. The midfielder Twisk is currently sidelined due to injury. No additional competitive issues have been reported for the visiting team. Our thinking is, youth teams are inherently unpredictable and their matchups often present a tantalizing balance in forecasts. It is impossible to dismiss any outcome in a contest where goals from both sides are a distinct possibility. However, it must be noted that the recent form of the home team has been less than impressive. For this reason, we shall bestow a slight advantage to Jong Alkmaar. Jong Alkmaar wins or draw goal goal 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 Helmont Sport
The fourth consecutive defeat in both the league and the cup arrived during a home local derby against FC Eindhoven, ending in a 3-4 loss and relegating the team to fifth place. A poor defensive transition and a lack of focus saw them fall behind zero too early on with goals from Blumeal in the 5th and 24th minutes and later one, three after Ingerson's strike in the 47th minute was quickly followed by Schleicher's goal in the 49th. Although they managed to equalise through van den Hoek in the 54th minute and a penalty in the 77th, yet another individual error left them empty-handed as Rotier scored in the 88th minute. The three consecutive losses in the Dutch second division not only knocked Hellman from the top spot, but also left them two points adrift of the automatic promotion places. It has proven challenging to maintain such high intensity, especially for a team that underwent significant changes over the summer and lacks depth in alternatives. The string of disappointing results has undoubtedly added an extra layer of psychological pressure. Team News the highly anticipated debut of winger Zimuangana is on the horizon. However, the team faces another setback with the absence of their key goalkeeper, van der Stein. Additionally, the talented Latvian forward Sitch will also be sidelined. The squad continues to grapple with injury concerns as centre-back van der Einden and midfielders Ludwig and Armin Duda have yet to recover from their ailments. Den Hag in a dramatic turn of events, she let slip the opportunity for a third consecutive three-pointer, conceding an equaliser just before the final whistle in a thrilling away match against Alkmaar B, which ended in a 3-3 draw. The evening had initially promised ease as her opponent's errors had gifted her team a commanding 3-0 lead at half-time with goals from Schalk, 28-41, and Bonus, 34. However, a sluggish start to the second half allowed the home side to claw their way back into contention, with goals from Smits, 47, and Robemont, 59. The situation grew increasingly precarious following the dismissal of Nikima in the 75th minute, culminating in a devastating blow during stoppage time from Andai, 95. In yet another encounter, Den Haag struggled to avoid lapses in concentration which proved costly this time around. Despite their resilience in tight matches, they have yet to establish consistency since the season's outset, uh, currently holding a record of 5-7-3 and remaining outside the top eight by three points. The upcoming trip to Helmand looms large, especially given their unfavourable recent record there, 1-0-5. On a brighter note, they have maintained a commendable away streak this season, boasting a record of 2-3-0. Team News. The primary goalkeeper, Nikiyama, has been suspended and will be replaced by Cormans. Meanwhile, midfielder Isaias has been excluded from the first team until further notice. Additionally, defender Hoke and midfielder Surmeli are currently sidelined due to injuries. No other issues have been reported regarding the composition of the visiting team's roster. Our thinking is... The events of Friday's matches unfolded unfavourably for both teams, each yearning to reclaim their path to success. Predictions regarding the ultimate victor appear challenging as both sides struggle to eliminate the lapses that have marred their performances. Goal, goal, over 2.5 goals, 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 goal, goal, over 2.5 goals. A Folentham. In a splendid display of prowess, the team secured their second consecutive victory with remarkable ease during the away match against PSV Eindhoven B, triumphing with a score of 4-1. This victory allowed them to extend their impressive streak in both the league and the cup to an enviable 7-1-0. From the outset, they dominated the game, netting all their goals in the first half, with Muchran finding the net at the 4th, 20th and 27th minutes, followed by Jacobs at the 42nd minute. Despite numerous opportunities to increase their lead, they were unable to capitalise further. The home side, on the other hand, offered little resistance, managing only two long-range attempts from a bed, one of which struck the post in the 53rd minute, while the other found the back of the net in the 58th minute. The offensive machinery is operating flawlessly, with the seasoned duo of Muhren and Fermann igniting the pitch with their brilliance. In their latest match, Muhren achieved a hat-trick while Fermann provided three assists, propelling Volendam to new heights. 
Currently, Rick Krause's squad shares the prestigious second position with de Grafschap, a spot that guarantees direct entry into the Eredivisie. Team News is... Ana menetai na kasun ena akome pai knidi omikron dexios and pakampukers kai oimeso in tekan fan interkorst. Young Ajax. The resounding three, zero victory over Telstar has put an end to a disheartening streak, 0-4-5, marking the first three points of the season in Amsterdam, now standing at 1-3-4. The first half was a lively affair with opportunities for both sides, culminating in the hosts taking the lead through Conondu in the 20th minute. Although the pace slowed in the second half, a catastrophic error by goalkeeper Koeman, Faberski 64, decisively tipped the scales in favour of the home team, while the final score was sealed in stoppage time by Banel in the 92nd minute. The young talents of Ajax's reserve team desperately needed such a result as their previous performances had been particularly lacklustre, adding an extra layer of psychological pressure. While they exhibit commendable ball possession, they often struggle to convert chances into goals and frequently make errors stemming from inexperience. The upcoming journey to Volendam poses a challenge as they seek to break their unfortunate away streak. 0-2-2 Team News The unfortunate winger Van Axel Donschen is set to miss the upcoming period. Additionally, the defender Butera remains sidelined from action. Our thinking is, Volendam is in remarkable form, effortlessly finding the back of the net. We anticipate that they will validate the predictions against Ajax B, who have recently returned to winning ways, yet it seems unlikely they will withstand the defensive pressure. Falentham wins over 2.5 goals, 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 Falentham wins over 2.5 goals. Subscribe to our channel and hit the like button to learn everything about football. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more football news. See you